This is Traber. We're creating the technology and the ecosystem for everything building. We're creating a market network which boasts a marketplace and a mobile first cloud based suite of project control tools for builders, consumers, trades, suppliers, for everybody. All on the smartphone, all remote, all mobile, all for building. This is Traber, and this is a building conversation. G'day, Tony Huxley here from Traber. Thanks for joining us. Today I'm really pleased to be sitting with Dan Morgan uh, from your forever home building uh, up on the Sydney Northern Beaches. Dan, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. So do you think that the, with the, 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 the David Chandler, the building commissioner now um, being in control and doing what seems to be a good job, um, appreciating most of his focus is on medium density development, not necessarily conventional residential stuff. Um, but surely there's got to be some sort of trickle down impact from all that bad news and negativity around oh, high rise buildings and how it affects people like you yep. working on a home in the suburbs. Of course. Do you um, see much of that sort of impacting in the near future or changing things more? Yeah, well, I have heard the new legislation was basically any sort of plans have to be signed off by the yeah, um, architect yep. and they have to be actually being that they're compliant now, which is, look, honestly, it should happen. It should happen a long time ago um, because they always try to put it back on the thing that's going, look, these plans are basically, that. that's it. You know, we can only do such and such. Um, the biggest thing you get taught, especially when you do builder's license, is making certain that everything has to go to Australian standards. If you have new materials, that the materials are compliant yep. and stuff like that, because quite often jobs can get requests new things and they're just plain not compliant. And yeah, it's, it's a forever sort of a changing landscape. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I guess in, a, in association or in relationship to that, the one of the biggest challenges I hear in a regulatory sense, I guess is what I'm saying, for builders seems to be the issue of home warranty Yes, um, huge. Insurance. Oh, it's, it's harder getting homeowner's warranty for a company, which I've already got, but it's, that process was harder than getting a builder's license. Wow. And then at the end of the day, it's regulating what I can and can't do. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think it's a fair system. Um, but having said that, I've passed passed all the hoops. I've done been a good monkey with that sort of thing. Yep. So I've done that sort of thing. I mean, you've got to have it. It's, you've got it's, to not, have a, it's not an it's if or a maybe. It's, you've got to do it. You have to have it. And I highly advise anyone who engages a builder who doesn't have it just to think twice. Walk away. Yeah, walk away because it's just it's going to end up in a disaster if they're not financially capable of running the jobs, if they're not compliant. Because that's basically the insurance just looks at finances. Yeah. And sees how you are performing as a company. Yeah, and your capability to your complete capability. the next one. That's exactly it. Your capabilities to do it and how much you can actually financially be responsible for at that time. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge for building. It's uh, yes. well, sorry, it's a bigger challenge for consumers because they're going to foot the bill at the end of the day. Yes, they do. Yeah. So it's. Um, it's not something that's going to go away anytime soon. But I, I, I think generally from what we're uh, discovering across all the conversations we're having is that most people are respecting what the Build Commission is doing because yep. all the benefits are going to trickle down to consumers right across the, the yep. built environment rather than rather than just home unit owners and big buildings. But yep. certainly, I guess it's going to help drive better standards, better quality, yep. better outcomes. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tony. Um, it's not my area of building, like the residential, high-end sort of thing. They, the guys are extremely good at what they do across yeah. the board. Like, isn't it, they'll be in business for about a month if they're not great crash yeah. right. That, that unit of, say, the medium-rise building where you didn't actually need technically need a building license, mate, go for it, you know what I mean? They, they should actually rip and, rip and shreds go into it, have a look at what's actually happened there. Yeah. Because it was basically, if you didn't know what you're doing, build something above three stories. Yeah. Whereas my wow. own market was basically, it's very, it's always been heavily regulated. Wow. Yeah. That's a sad indictment on the industry, but I guess it's also something that's just, it's like any industry, there's always going to be bad apples. That's very true. There's a, that's, that's tarnishing everyone with the same sort of paintbrush. When yeah. you have some really, really good ones out there, you have like the Langer Orcs, you have like the really good builders, you have tailors, you have the ones who basically do the right thing and they try to make it there, the employee builders, 
and the mate standards, everything's to Australian standards. They have those guys, and believe me, they do an incredible job. Yeah. And then you obviously have the, the dodgy ones who have just had a lot of money. Yeah. And just goes, oh, we can just do this. And they've done the wrong thing, but I'm saying, what I'm saying is, oh, that was a very offhanded sort of remark that I probably just made before, but I completely agree with what's actually going to be happening. Thanks very much for joining us, Dan Morgan from Your Forever Homes. Appreciate it. Good to meet you. Thanks Thank for your time. You. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Cheers.